Hi, JC here with Autocrit, and today we're strapping on our boxing gloves and diving right into the driving force behind any compelling story, conflict. Ready for round one? In dramatic storytelling, there are two main types of conflict your characters are going to have to deal with, internal conflict and external conflict. In simple terms, external conflict is the interaction between your character and the outside world. Think of things such as other people, bad situations, and unfortunate circumstances. It could even be a location or something like a system's malfunction, severe weather, or natural disaster. Overcoming an external conflict is often your character's primary mission. Think of Frodo Baggins' quest to take the One Ring to Mordor, for example. Internal conflicts, on the other hand, are the struggles your characters face within themselves. These conflicts fuel character arcs and lead to personal growth. Emotional problems such as abandonment issues or hostility, phobias, or guilt can often make for absorbing internal conflicts. So, in essence, the difference between these types of conflict can be boiled down to whether the fight is carried out in real life or inside your character's head. A riveting story will usually include both of these types of conflict, but it isn't always easy to keep them balanced across the length of an entire novel. That's when the problems start to show up. When we're too focused on external conflict, you can end up with a grand sweeping core story that's exhilarating and bombastic, but the characters feel flat. There doesn't quite seem to be enough to them, and we aren't fully invested in the overall outcome. Swing the pendulum the other way and you might wind up with deep, heartfelt characters that feel like our best friends. We care for them, we enjoy their company, and we want to see them succeed. But the story is boring because the characters really don't seem to do much of anything. There's little going on that's forcing them to strive outwardly in the world. We know conflict creates tension, sets up suspense, fuels growth, and raises the stakes. But how do we create a well-rounded character without letting the external conflict overwhelm the internal and vice versa? As a writer, both scenarios are equally frustrating ones in which to find yourself stuck. So here are a few of our top tips for balancing the fight. Let's say your protagonist's external conflict is that they need to survive the harsh surface of Mars so they can get back to their ship before it leaves. This could be paired with an internal conflict, the character's own fear of wide open spaces. This is a clear collision of conflicts, and they both stand firmly in the way of the lead character reaching their goal. Mars is full of wide open spaces, and the protagonist must conquer their fears or find a way around them if they're going to escape. Less obvious obstacles could come in the form of deep-rooted beliefs or emotional problems. If your character has trust or social issues, they might struggle at their jobs involving teamwork. That's a quirk you'll probably be familiar with seeing at the center of many detective shows on TV. In the most recent BBC adaption of Sherlock Holmes, Holmes and Watson must solve a different external conflict, a central mystery each episode. Holmes' internal conflict is that he has limited social skills, which might be an understatement, yet he must interact with other people to solve the mystery. Watson's internal conflict, on the other hand, is exasperation at his best friend's odd habits and sociopathic tendencies. This leads to external conflict between the two. Usually this boils up in the form of heated arguments, but Watson's skepticism ultimately brings Sherlock down to earth. The oppositional dynamic between these two brings their core relationship to life, and it always plays out in the parallel to the primary external conflict, which is, of course, the hunt for the villain. Iconic conflicts from other stories serve as a shortcut in the reader's mind, so they're very easy to engage with. Archetypal external conflicts can include a father angered that his son doesn't want to follow in his footsteps, or a familiar David and Goliath scenario, like you see in just about every courtroom drama. Internal conflict archetypes range from being driven to do what's morally right in the face of overwhelming opposition to wrestling with the darker side of your own personality. Every one of us can relate to most internal conflicts, but an archetype arises when something becomes synonymous with a genre or when the outcome is inevitable, though that doesn't mean you can't subvert expectations in the finish. 
you might want to dismiss the idea of using archetypes like this because it could be seen as cliché. And yes, to some degree it is, but your job as a writer is to make the journey interesting. As long as you can do that, archetypes are generally not to be feared. With a strong iconic backbone holding up your story, you're on pretty stable ground. This can help knock away any doubt and let you feel more confident about filling in the finer points without ignoring the central conflict too much. Internal and external conflict can definitely be tricky to balance, but if you get into the habit of always having one type inform or impact the other, you should find yourself the proud writer of a truly fleshed out story. As a final note, don't forget that even your minor characters need conflicts of their own. Those smaller bit players are people too and have their own struggles, no matter how trivial they might seem in the grand scheme of your plot. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining us and don't forget to subscribe for more great writing and editing tips and share your own methods and advice in the comments below. See you next time.